<laughs> when you as a German or Austrian try to adapt the local context to just fail. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so that to prove that, uh, that profiling <coughs> uh, context awareness is something difficult. <coughs> uh, perhaps I would suggest uh, for people who are in the, in the back to come here, you know, because yesterday I tried, I was there, and it's really difficult to... Well, it's not difficult to see the... See, yeah, it's okay. Because otherwise, there are plenty of. Don't be shy. <laughs> plenty of uh, space. Uh, not free. You know, I'm gonna have some very small writings on the screen. So I know your eyes are getting tired because you're getting old because it was your birthday two weeks ago. So <laughs> maybe you should come from. <laughs> We're just wondering if we the other answer would be better and more the auditory. Move a little bit because we can. <laughs> because uh, there was a possibility also to move a little bit the, the tables in order to be a bit, little bit closer. So I don't know, no, I don't know. If, if you can see very well, it's okay. But otherwise, there are plenty of of seats, and well, people will arrive in the morning. So I take, put your name, <laughs> take, the, take a seat, put uh, put your name to, to reserve. All, all the theories are true. I arrived very late today, as everybody recognizes sitting. <laughs> Okay, so so just for for uh, people from Po and PPA, so it's a workshop. So you are really allowed and encouraged to interrupt <laughs> uh, after the first slide. If you uh, don't wait until it's not like in a conference when you have to wait until the end and then you raise your hand. You don't need to raise your hand. You can uh, in, in, when there is something not uh, that you don't uh, that uh, seems strange or just. Uh, uh, well, it's a workshop, so if you if there is a slide you don't understand, then you you are lo you are lost. <laughs> so um, just a, f uh, a little disclosure: there are, there are some stuff that I'm going to talk about that are not defined in the exact same slide that they appear, but I promise to you they're going to be defined just after that. So <laughs> if you d if you ask a <coughs> question, what's that? It's probably going to be on the next slide. That's it. And. Timekeeper <laughs> wants to be the timekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> Who has uh, authority? Follow? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because nobody will. Yes, if, if I do the, the job, nobody <laughs> will. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, hi everyone. My name is Remy, and I'm like Remy Kenyas. I'm very honored to have this first presentation for the workshop. Uh, I'm. Uh, the, there is just a slight problem. Is uh, I was born on Friday morning. That was uh, that I had the first slot. So it's going to be kind of a semi-improvised presentation, which is pretty cool. And I think Sullivan is also going to give one of those. <laughs> but <laughs> it's going to be uh, great anyway. So my name is Remy, and I'm a PhD student for STS Company, which is actually a startup. And I'm going to explain more what this startup is doing. The little thing is that uh, my PhD thesis actually started before the startup was created. So um, my PhD thesis and the, um, like, uh, the, um, the building of this startup company is really like a parallel process. So a lot of stuff are going back and forth between me and uh, the people doing the, like, actually working for SIS. So I'm a PhD student under the supervision, supervision of uh, Lionel Bruni and also all some other people from the uh, Dream team in the lab. And I'm going to present to you today a presentation about confidential machine learning and more precisely on the impact of data encryption on machine learning algorithms. Actually, this is kind of a misleading title because uh, I'm going to first describe a lot about the, the context and uh, the system we're working on on SES and then actually the, uh, the impact of machine learning on encrypted data comes most in uh, like the proposed solution and problem. So this is the not improvised part of my presentation. This is my outline. Uh, I'm first, I'm going to describe a little bit the context of my thesis and the problem faced by me and by the company. Uh, I'm going to describe uh, a little bit what is in place nowadays. And uh, well it's a formal description of what we're doing at ACS. And then I'm going to explain the few problems that we 
uh, came across and uh, the proper solution that we built and then I'm gonna finish with a little bit of conclusion. So first, um, context of my work. Uh, what this all about is the question that I wish to answer and normally at the end of this section you, you're gonna know, you're gonna be able to like answer this question. So first, um, SIS, which is my company, is a web platform that aims to, to quantify the risk of invoice fraud. What is an invoice fraud? It's um, uh, when a client, uh, usually a big company, uh, pays a fake supplier. A fake supplier, so like a supplier is someone that works for the client, and some, um, some of the transactions that are made are uh, some invoices that are received by the company are produced by fake supplier. So most of the time, this uh, fake supplier have a uh, uh, like legitimate ID of, a of the company, of the supplier, but they produce a, a fraudulent banking information, like the, the bank account is not the one of the legitimate company, is the one of the, the user. So uh, a lot of companies have lost a lot of money from invoice fraud, so um, the people from SIS decided to build a web platform that will prevent this kind of fraud. Uh, the solution they propose is to build a ledger with banking information for a lot of legitimate suppliers from a lot of <laughs> clients and uh, this build a, shared, a really big database with shared knowledge for all the users of the platform and then we can easily verify <coughs> if the banking information associated to uh, supplier's ID match or doesn't match or if, they, um, if there is some problems with this banking information. So uh, in order to really provide the, the risk, we check um, the provided ID and the provided banking information and we check if uh, they match against some models like produce models or legitimate models. And in order to uh, introduce you a little bit more, I have this kind of formal system description here. So here is a textual description, here is a little schematic description that I made this night, so, <laughs> <laughs> so it might be a little <laughs> bit <laughs> not good. So uh, basically, we have this uh, company A that wish to use our platform. Uh, it has to it register first on the platform, giving its credential, like its identity, <coughs> identification number, and also H, H which is uh, uh, the history of the past <laughs> transaction that this client had with a lot of suppliers. Uh, in so this transaction, as the form, ID, I mean that ID is the identifi identification information for the supplier, IBAN is the banking information of the supplier, and date is the date of the transi transaction. So we, in H, we have a lot of transactions. Some of them are legitimate, some of them are fraudulent, but all of them have been <laughs> issued by the client, H. So uh, um, our data P, which is what well, I call SIS, once um, A is registered, it's going to store safely store H in this big repository U, U that contains all the history, history of transaction of all the users, so, so A and <laughs> maybe B, maybe C. And so one of the requirements is that this database U and so this history of transaction A, H has to be safely stored because H contains a lot of critical data about business data that can be used by a malicious attacker to, the, to then he can sell it to um, uh, A's, uh, I don't know, competitors. It's like valuable data. So we need to have a really good security on this part of the, of the platform. And then what does the platform do? A, if it registers to the platform, wants to know if uh, the next transaction that it's going to make, make is fraudulent or not. So in order to do so, uh, it sends the transaction with the ID of the supplier you want to check, the ABN of the supplier of the new transaction, and the date of the transaction, which is basically the date of today. And the platform do like this three steps. First, um, this transaction is going to be pre-processed, and we're going to uh, add some data to this basic transaction because we we will be able to derive some information from you using this identifier, uh, the, the supplier identifier, and the banking identifier. So we derive this information from you, and we add it to the, to the transaction. <coughs> then from this enriched data, we're going to um, run a, um, a function that's going to calculate the, 
what we call the reliability scores, which is it, which is going to be uh, how much this transaction may be fraudulent. And then we use a classifier, which is pretty basic to know, that's going to output um, three labels. Either the transaction is safe, is, or it's risky, or it's definitely fraudulent. So this is the three steps that's going to that the platform will make in order to define uh, to uh, <coughs> uh, compute this risk of fraudulent transaction. So here we have these three functions. This one is pretty simple, so I didn't describe it, but this one are kind of complex, so I'm going to describe them more in detail. So the pre-processing function that I call PP because pre-processing uh, takes into input the tra the new transaction uh, issued by A and the global history of transaction of all the uh, like the global history of transaction, and it outputs an arranged enriched transaction, and with N is it's a new enriched transaction. In order to do so, uh, right now what we do in the platform is we, uh, we have these three functions that we're going to use. Uh, first, we have the first function that derives, that calculates the number of occurrence of this um, identify, identify, identify number in our global database. We have a second function that do the same, but for the banking information. And third, uh, the third function that's going to try to find the number of transactions that match uh, the ID and the banking information all together, <coughs> which is probably uh, and so there are also a lot um, some others uh, um, pre-processing, which is m mostly uh, going to be if the banking information is still uh, uh, valid. We have a third party that can check if the banking information is actually be uh, belonging to an account that is uh, active, and also uh, we have. Um, a third party verification that verifies if the uh, identifying number that are, is given to us it belongs to a company that really exists. As that's our own two kind of preprocessing, but it's not the scope of uh, this presentation because what interests me most is how this new transaction um, interacts with this global uh, database in order to uh, give more information about the data. R R R can I interrupt you yes. just for a second? I didn't understand. In you, you have trusted the records, or some some are not trusted? <coughs> uh, in you, this is a problem that uh, we don't really know. There are, um, this is a transaction that were that are issued from all the clients, from of all the uh, all the clients of the platform. <coughs> and so we knew that some of them are uh, correct, legitimate transactions, and some some of them may not be legitimate transaction, but we we don't know. Uh, we don't know the uh, the variable. We just know that this transaction occurred. So this is one of one of the problems that we have <laughs> is that we make the hypothesis that most of them are legitimate, but we don't know for sure. There is no labeling. No there is no labeling at all in this database. Mm -hmm. So the, it's the only data point. Uh, so you you could have most of the records could be fake. Yeah. Um, this is. There are also. This could happen, right? Yes. No. Uh, uh, most of them, no. Uh, most of them not are fake. Uh, most likely not. I hope, most I hope for the company. Yes. Yeah. Most, <laughs> <likely not because laughs> most, most of them are fake. <laughs> Invoice the pay company not fake. paid a lot of fake suppliers and not uh, <laughs> and not legitimate suppliers. Yeah. But there is a case which uh, some clients, some some company might be like a fraudulent company and try to update. Fake, uh, fake transaction, I, uh, and then if the fake transaction are taking mm. into account in you, then then we're going to be have a problem because a lot of fake, mm. uh, fake transaction. Okay, my question is probably more Sorry. related to the companies that okay. uh, registered. You assume that the companies are yes. good companies. Yes, exactly. So, but what happens if you have fake <coughs> companies that try to inject bad records? I, uh, this is a very interesting question because uh, some of uh, the professors that were here. Um, uh, I did a presentation on the last workshop that was exactly about this point. It's like, oh, how do we make sure that the companies that produce transactions are actually companies that we can trust uh, and not fake companies? So there is a whole. Um, um, this is a, a, this part of the verification. This part of the platform, uh, we have a lot of work uh, ongoing on on this part particularly. But this is like um, a whole other topic. 
uh, compared to what I'm going to be presenting. But we, we, we know about this problem and we studied it and it turns out to be like, kind of complicated. Mm -hmm. But this is kind of related to uh, the work of Mathieu on, um, on uh, I don't know, uh, um, authentic um, sati um, user authentication. This is a, an authentication problem. Uh, when to, be, to make sure that companies are good companies, it's more like an authentication program. And this presentation focuses more on the machine learning problem. So we make as an hypothesis that most of the transactions here come from good companies. Okay. Yeah, I, I actually, in the for the, in the, bu in the business of uh, this uh, startup, they want to start with, uh, with uh, a limited number yeah. of, uh, of uh, golden, uh, golden clients. Yeah. So very urge companies like we you know, uh, so urge companies yeah. with, with uh, thous hundreds of thousands of, of mm -hmm. transactions and uh, this can populate uh, yeah. by more, I don't know, I don't remember how many, how many thousand, hundreds Something of thousands like, uh, of... Something like 375,000 yeah. records so given so by trusted companies because so they're... The very big companies yeah. have a lot of Supply. uh, suppliers and so they can, uh, uh, as soon as you can uh, authenticate that it's, uh, it's one of these big companies in which you have a good trust, then uh, it can, uh, you can start from, uh, from a pretty good uh, from a pretty good uh, histi historical uh, historical uh, database. Yeah. The point, but the point is true. After, mm. after the the goal, after a while, uh, would be to integrate the history uh, provided by mm -hmm. all the all yeah. the clients, not yeah. only the gold, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not only no. the platinum, uh, yes. the platinum clients. So right now, this but the, um, this um, but problem, is that this is more uh, a fundamental theoretical issue because. They, they cover oh, well the way well they work in uh, that business is in uh, in construction and civil engineering mm -hmm. and in, in this domain the big companies really they they have a web of <laughs> a web of, um, of, uh, of, of um, suppliers which yeah. is incredible they have they have but contractualized but they have contracts with many many suppliers and so but isn't that always a way how you can get this kind of ground truth information because if a transaction was positive and is yeah. rated by one of the companies as positive, then so this information is very hard to get. Like we're gonna have the, um, the history of transaction. The first uh, history of transaction are provided with trust by trusted <coughs> company. Is actually like companies that invested money on the startup, so they're they're trusted because they want the, the, sta the, um, yeah. the startup to work, but we don't have the grant source. We're in this history of, history of transaction, we don't know which ones are fraudulent and which ones are not fraudulent. Even, uh, but even but the companies don't know. Even, this is even them. Yeah, that's why we don't have that strange for us, but they e even them don't know. Yeah. So they also don't stop them doing transactions Because they don't know that they, it was fraudulent. <laughs> they realize it perhaps. <laughs> A uh, long time after, so it's very strange because it's and uh, okay. But realizing long time after is good. Yeah, yeah it's because good. then you could realize. Yeah. It yeah. So um, yeah, I'm going to talk about that after because it's actually it's actually but one yeah. of the points that I'm going to present in this uh, in this. Well, just a question here: uh, What is BN? In, uh, oh, it's a uh, banking. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. I I missed uh, <laughs> I missed that because it was not in it's the type of it's uh, it's uh, IBAN. I'm sorry, <laughs> it's uh, BN is. Uh, I have put the two of them because I put it VM in the paper that I'm. Yeah, so it's the right it's IBAN? IBAN, yeah, it's it's the same thing. I'm sorry, oh, okay. I, I I put the two of them in this. But if you look it, it's, yeah. it's a banking information, mm -hmm. so it might be I IBAN, but I took a general like because right. IBAN is actually like the name of the banking information now, but I uh, I won't I call it B in the paper because I wanted to have a like more general banking information. Mm -hmm. Uh, term. So sorry about that. So this is a preprocessing function. Uh, the scoring function, which is uh, we take this enriched transaction and uh, we try to uh, to output a uh, uh, reliability store. And what we're doing today uh, in ACS, it's uh, we have a set of expert rules that say, yeah, if uh, if w in the history of transaction we have uh, occurrences of the this supplier, but we don't have any event that match that match the transaction that you gave us, it's probably a fraudulent transaction. And this is a very simple rule. There are mm -hmm. some more complicated rules, which are um, if uh, the number of transactions that match this 
uh, uh, eBank, uh, this banking information and this uh, supplier identification is superior or equal to the median of the uh, number of transactions occurring of all the other suppliers or all the other banking information, then uh, we can absolutely assume that this uh, reliability score is not fraudulent. And how did you decide this function? Um, this is actually like my uh, some people in the company that know the business that uh, that says yeah this um, if this case occurs okay. then <coughs> it's most likely to be a for this uh, for the for the loose transaction. For example, if you have uh, if you have an IBAN uh, banking information that belongs to several companies that are not linked uh, in any way, then we can safely assume that this banking information belongs to someone that wants to uh, that wants to impersonate them because. Could it, so be as okay. yeah. Could it be or possible? Yeah. Could it be possible changed for this company? Could it be possible to experiment uh, Leopold? If the event says uh, it means that one uh, event has been on uh, on this set of but one event having several companies, it's only day. But tomorrow you can speak. You were the first. I was just wondering. Did you discuss together with with Leopold? Well, actually, Leopold made. A <laughs> work on, uh, you know, a work on uh, the use of Chaplet value to to select uh, the the most profitable uh, set of rules. Yeah, but I'm, I'm I was just wondering if it could uh, if it could be interesting both for you or for Leopold yeah, just to have another. Because I've been I've been reading like the title of the presentation and uh, huh? and talked a little bit about some people here and uh, I'm I'm actually uh, I'm gonna have some very interesting work conversation during this workshop and <laughs> I know it. So here is what we're doing now on the platforms, and this is <laughs> because here it's not uh, we have we we really know the the um, there is no well it's a startup company we know very well so you, we can have access <laughs> yeah. to all the information it's more it's easier than with uh, with Worldline. <laughs> so yeah, right now a big part of my work was to. Uh, take what everyone was saying to me in the startup and put it in a formal way with like a nice <laughs> nice graphics and nice uh, nice thematic views and nice uh, mathematical formulation because uh, it wasn't presented to me that way at all so <laughs> so that was one of uh, <laughs> this doing this was kind of a, a, a big work and now we arrive to the problem that we have on this platform the first one is that we have this set of expert rules to describe the um, um, the fraudulent to, to make the scoring, but we think that it's not good enough because some because expert knowledge have um, have some short hands and we wish to uh, use a machine learning learning algorithm in order to learn directly from the data and uh, bypass the expert knowledge. Like we're gonna use it, but we want to use it in uh, in respect with an, a machine learning algorithm to 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 know if some produced data may be uh, present even though the experts haven't noticed them. Uh, the first problem is that we don't have a lot of uh, enriched transaction to learn from because a new enriched transaction is only made when um, a company user asks for, for a scoring on a new transaction and right now this doesn't do occur at all because the platform is not open. So we, don't, we have uh, literally no, no data uh, for this scoring algorithm. So this is a problem in order to train and test our machine learning algorithm. So what we want to do you can generate is uh, exactly we use the database of all the transactions that we gather, and uh, and from them we have this these transactions that occur in the past, mm -hmm. and we can use them to create data points. So that's what we're going to do. And this is so the problem is kind of like easily solved instead of. And this is where the date is important because then from the date we can uh, like have this uh, pre-processing function we're going to take into account the date and so we can know if uh, the, the bank account was valid or something like that. So well, the first step is to uh, enrich the data that we have in you. So this is not, this is like the first problem is kind of solved, it's only like engineering problems. No, it's easy to say that we're going to do that, but in, the practi in, in practice it's always more complicated than that. So the second, like you want, to, you want to generate some uh, some kind of attack also, some kind of attacks. Uh, not right now. This is you want to just to have. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, actually, I have um, a schematic view just after. It's like instead of 
uh, only working on uh, transactions that are sent by, by um, the company. We want to use the history of transaction to make like all the transaction in our history of transaction was submitted by A oh. at, the, at the correct oh. time. And so this is gonna, this is mm. just like enriching the data basically. Mm. And because we, we can derive knowledge and, and so this is all we're gonna create all data points to learn from. And the second problem is like we don't, we have a lot of potential <coughs> machine learning algorithm like classification, clustering and um, a lot of others and so we know that some of them may work be best that others on this data set but we don't have it yet so we don't know which one is the most suitable for our uh, particular application so we need to in now no that we have the enriched data points we need to make some experimentation in order to to define which is the best machine learning algorithm for okay. this particular application if you don't have the labels how can you uh, this this yeah, how actually can you this evaluate the, the performance of the algorithm so this is um this is going going to give us um first levels because we once we have enriched the data set we can run our uh, like the the physics code based rule rules uh, the autom mm -hmm. automatic rules that we have and this is going to give us first mm -hmm. labels okay. and then from these first labels we can yeah. use machine learning algorithm to uh, yeah. to um, um, how do you say? to train our, uh, our machine learning algorithm and mm -hmm. so but, but then you only learn the rules yeah yeah, yeah. if we do provide yeah. this way how costly or how sensitive is it that you make a false positive error? Is um, it critical for your customers to saying that's a fraudulent transaction but it isn't? Um, actually, um, What's the, cost of it? the goal of the company is to provide um, insurance. So making a false positive is actually we, uh, the way I think it, but I need to talk about my uh, the like companies private for that because I never asked the question. The thing is, um, the way I see it, it's not, um, this is not a, a blocking part of the process of paying the transaction. This is only here to raise an alarm. It, it might be fraudulent, it might not be fraudulent. So the thing is, um, le, when, when big companies process transactions, they have a, a, a huge volume of transactions to do and they can they can spend a lot of time on each transaction to make sure that they, they're, they're fraudulent. <coughs> trustable or not. So if we have face positive, I think it's not very critical because it's, it's we're gonna then like the people from the company are gonna have to check this transaction in more details and then they can they can actually say if it's fraudulent or not. But the thing is they can do that they, they cannot do that for all the transaction and this is just gonna raise alarm for some of them. And so the, the most risky I think. Yeah. So what they actually want to solve then is a ranking problem. They want to rank the yeah. Okay. Exactly. I need yeah, to write that down somewhere. We're going with some of the clients and so. Or classification problem. Yeah. Well, but you, you want to have the, the yeah. you, They can't only process a certain amount yeah. of transaction yeah. per yeah. per. Okay. Uh, uh, per yeah. day or so in, at the company, yeah. they don't want to present like more. Actu mm. Actually, the two are 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 pertinent. If I remember well, my discussion with some of the clients for big companies, they have a pool of people who. We try to investigate when they feel that there is something strange. And mm -hmm. so, yeah. if we can help them and say, well, this is a ranking. And so, uh, and for example, they say, well, if we pay, uh, what, well, let's say, one uh, one thousand euros for fake companies, it's not a problem for us. We don't care. <laughs> so, for example, the, the amount uh, the amount of money is really important yeah. for this because for these very big companies, every day they pay millions and millions of of, of invoices. But for so for them, I think it's really a, a problem of ranking. For smaller companies, they have absolutely nobody. So yeah. nobody is uh, the, they pay, <laughs> yeah. and um, so ideally they say, well, both the small and the big and the big companies say, well, we would just be happy to get rid of that, and so we pay uh, we, we pay uh, uh, an insurance, and if you say don't pay, we don't uh, we. Well, we don't pay, <laughs> but well, there should be some kind of quality of service. <laughs> if you say pay and we pay and it's a fake, uh, it's a fake invoice, uh, then uh, we are reimbursed by uh, by the insurance. And so, well, it's completely different from the credit card for de for detection, where the customer is <laughs> is uh, is at the is at the office and uh, he wants uh, he wants to to have uh, his item here. Well, if uh, if you 
well, if you raise an alarm for a big amount of money and if it's actually if it appears to be okay and uh, there was no reason to get an, al an alarm well, it's not so, so a problem because people don't expect to be paid in the minute mm. usually they pay after uh, after some days or so so uh, I, I agree it can be some kind of uh, or, or some kind of mix um, yeah. some kind of ranking, si uh, ranking uh, system yes but well, anyway formally it's more or less like the word like problem because we have a limited capacity of yeah. Yeah. The yeah. This is also yeah, very sim yeah, this is very similar to what even has been working on. So we this is what um, this is work on us for one PhD thesis actually just this part. But this is problem one, so you might expect that there is a problem two. So I'm gonna explain explain the problem two because um <laughs> so yeah, the second problem is that uh, we need to securely to safe to safely store this historic of transaction. So the most common solution to do that is use data encryption so this is very cool and it works very very well um, may there might be a problem though is that we need we're gonna have encrypted data points here and we need to use this encrypted data point to do our pre-processing uh, pre-processing and then calculate understand. so right now we need this to make the pre-processing so uh, this is a problem because your yeah, pre-processing is on encrypted data might not work so um, we have a very simple solution is that uh, P is in charge of encrypting the data so it, it can decrypt it and so now he, ha he has the data and everything works perfectly. The problem is it's easy and it, it's not really a problem if we do that but if someone goes on the platform, steals the database and then steals the key, there's no security at all and everything is stored on the platform so it might be a problem if someone is goes on the platform. So we have another solution that might be it's the data is directly encrypted by A, we provide them the means to encrypt the data, but uh, we choose which kind of algorithm is they're going to use. So the data uh, came to the platform already encrypted and then the problem is we need to have this encryption system that allow us to do the operation of, of pre-processing. And this is a little bit more complex, but there are some studies that have been made on actually uh, doing some kind of operation on encrypted data, namely uh, homomorphic encryption and also um, secure encryption. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, so this is uh, one of the problem and so this is just what I explained. We need to use this encrypted database to perform s several functions. Does an, encryp um, does an encryption system that allows us to do these functions exist or not? <coughs> and the second problem is if we, if we want to do not only the processing but also the calculation of the score on an encrypted database, it means that not it's not only some part of the function that are encrypted but also our transa transaction in when they came in. Because uh, so just sorry to interrupt you again. Um, why you want to do data encryption? I mean, why you you are using this uh, option? Because you can also consider other <coughs> options which, which could be more related to uh, anonymization mm -hmm. like you can do some processing from the company side asking the company or you can do it yourself within the, the platform uh, um, like you anonymize some data and like this you don't have any risk okay so this is a requirement from my boss he actually uh, <laughs> he actually told me he decided <laughs> yeah he decided <laughs> uh, i came up with a, like a really good um uh, anonymization system using a uh, uh, secure sum algorithm and i said just like you, you know you have like some random if you if you add all of this see uh, you you have all the you have all the data you want and you don't know which one uh, which one and he you say yeah that's cool but i need encrypted data on my database that's one of the requirements and this is because um, <coughs> even though uh, this is ter theoretically possible to prove uh, anonymity with like um, um, not using encryption, this is possible and scientists know that and they understand that. But if you want to sell, uh, to say to a company your, your data is protected, the only way they understand that is it has to be encrypted because otherwise they, they don't really... They uh, you can tell them that the data will yeah. be encrypted while you are anonymizing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I tried to, to tell my boss, but he said, you know, it, it has to be encrypted. So, <laughs> so it, it's, it's kind of actually interesting. 
<laughs> it's, it's interesting to think about the problem that way because it, it asks a lot of questions and so uh, I know that we can do some other stuff but working on encrypted data is really interesting. Okay, but I mean, since we are scientists here, yeah, I think I don't think that this is convincing enough. Okay, we we can talk uh, a little bit more about <laughs> that later. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. You pay me. <laughs> I mean, it can it can be fun to to compare the yeah. two, two types of solutions. Uh, we can we can come and talk to your boss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All together. The next time we invite him, we'll see you. Yeah. All together. What did you say? <laughs> Gabriele is strong. <laughs> I agree. I'm, uh, I'm, going, I'm going there with um, Sarah Busnak next Monday, and we're going to, like, because, <laughs> yeah, this is one of the requirements. So I went along with the requirements. That's true that there might be some other way to uh, anonymize the data. One of the things is um, in encryption seems to be. Most uh, it's commonly known. It's kind of easy to 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 to, ma to put in place <coughs> in, the, in the platform right now, and we don't have to elaborate a, a very um, complex anonymization strategy that maybe that may be on the platform in two years. Like right now, we have encryption systems, uh, and it protects the data. And this is actually one of the uh, in order to sell the, the the product of the company, they have to to provide the proof very rap very quickly that the, the data is protected so they, they can wait so yeah I agree that this is this not might not be the best way to under this program but this is the way that um, my boss wanted to do so yeah I'm working on that right now <laughs> um, so here the problem is like not only the, the part of the the database used in the pre process is encrypted but also the Identifiant of the transactions and and this kind of stuff. yeah all all the data that we use is encrypted basically and this is a problem. So uh, <coughs> we have a proposed solution which is more like a solution that I want to put in place in order to solve the problems. Uh, first, like kind of the works that I've done already, it's focused on. Uh, the use of encrypted data for the pre-processing part, so kind of the, the easy way, so um, which is basically um, how to make um, functions that are gonna compute the occurrence of uh, an encrypted key, you know, of a of a clear key in an encrypted database. So there are kind of a lot of works that I'm uh, in the literature that talks about that. And also, I think some of the the team in uh, Abu Dhabi, maybe, and <coughs> Prima Laboratory are working on uh, SQL request on encrypted data, something like that. So solutions exist, and I just need to uh, put them in practice. So the, the second problem is when the key is also encrypted. Also, there is a, there are also more complex solutions, but they exist. And I forgot to put the literature, so sorry about that. And what is, in in my opinion, the most interesting work is that we have this real program that we need to find a machine learning algorithm that suits the data that we have. But we also have to find this machine learning algorithm that is go is able to work on encrypted data. And this is very interesting because I don't think that this kind of solutions exist. Like machine learning algorithm that works uh, um, some of them exist because I find them in the literature but I find that like, two papers working up talking about that and so what I propose to do is actually a two level approach one is the bottom up approach I find some solutions on in the literature which is machine learning computation machine learning on encrypted data by Waple and Al uh, and what I propose to do is see if this proposed solution works on the data set that we have and then if the encryption that they propose in order to make this um, machine learning on encrypted data is compatible with the preprocessing function that we have defined before. So this is the bottom up approach. We have a solution, we need to know if it works on the real life like the real life data that we have. And we also have the top down approach which is 
The first question is, the answer was no, <laughs> because it's a ranking problem, not a classification problem. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean... So you already have the answer. <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> but then I, I, I didn't like, formally answer the question yet. So, <laughs> so I need to formally answer the question yes, the question before saying no. I think it's interesting. <coughs> we, we, I don't have to actually make the experiment, but I, I have but, to. But, or if I can rephrase the question. So yeah, do you also. Did, there, uh, did, did you find a. But yet, I'm not able yet. to to modify my slide when people are uh, submitting me ideas. So this was before the ranking problem was explained <laughs> to me. So <laughs> if I was able to do that, the, uh, the question would have been reformulated. But, but, but the question is just then how to make out a ranking problem from yeah. a binary classification. Exactly, it's yeah. an interesting yeah. question uh -huh. because a ranking problem might be made from in different ways. So uh, this uh, is the bottom of in, in the papers you you read, have you seen some ranking algorithm working on? Uh, on uh, encrypted data. Sorry. Have you have you seen a, r a ranking algorithm working on? Uh, yes. On uh, homomorphic or uh, uh, encrypted data. Yes, yeah, I propose yeah. an experimental the rhythm, the rhythm, an experimental right. uh, setup on like uh, the breast cancer data set, mm. and they're uh, using your uh, your like level homomorphic encryption scheme in order to detect um, mm. binary classification. I think they use um, um, poly polynomial polynomial mm. detection uh, it's kind of com complex to summarize right now and, and maybe I don't have much time so this is our bottom up approach it's like we have something that works on encrypted data and we want to explore the possibilities from there and then we have the top down approach which is uh, we know that uh, different machine algorithm machine learning algorithms relies on uh, different underlying properties of the data distribution for example uh, k-means is based on the distance between the points and finding the nearest neighbors and um, this actually is the title of my presentation is we have um, encryption systems that may or may not uh, conserve these properties in the in the data distribution and I wasn't able to find in the literature any paper that mm, that makes evidence of that I don't know we th this has not been studied all encryption systems impacts on the underlying properties of data distribution. And I think this is kind of an interesting topic because it's very high level, uh, but it's at least to the other question. Um, if we know which, uh, which data properties are impacted in each way in, for in sorry, encryption system, then maybe we can find um, or secure encryption schemes that is going to work for the ranking algorithm. So. This is mostly most like we study the algorithm in the literatures and we study the the the, the encryption chains in the literature. We try to find properties and uh, ohm and we try to make them work together in order to solve our problems. So this is why it's like the top down approach. Okay. <laughs> Actually, the first one is not an option. It's the state of the art. Yeah, <laughs> it's the doing the state of the art. Yeah. Analyzing the the. And the why efficiency I'm doing of the state of the art on your, uh, on the your thing specific is Why problem. I'm doing that is because um, I, I work for uh, the, the SES company needs uh, answer pretty <coughs> quick. So uh -huh. so a yeah. part of my yeah. work is to provide answer to them pretty yeah. quickly. That it m that may not be the, the most yeah. suitable answer in in general in in a theoretic way, but they need an answer right now, and then we can improve on them mm. on, on this. So this is it. Yeah, so this is why it justifies the fact that. Uh, it's not only the top-down approach; it's only, it's only the bottom down. Uh, yeah. But the, what I want to do is making converge, uh, making the two approaches converge, because we're gonna learn some stuff from the um, the, the state of the art, and we're gonna learn some other information on the on the top-down approach. And so this is why it's interesting, and I think this is why uh, I have the, the I am very lucky to do a, 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 a thesis in a company because we we are able to taste in real life so i haven't done that so this is the future works uh so this is for the bottom of our approach we have two questions is binary classification okay for a use case is level homomorphic encryption okay for a use case like you can see yonel i i 
I predicted that you were gonna say no to the first question, so <laughs> I have a <laughs> so I have a, a, a way to to do that. So um, if the two questions are yes, and we know it's not gonna be that, uh, I was planning on to do an exhaustive study on cost and also attack scenarios. That's where what and this is basically looks for the limits of the start the start of the art approach. Like what are the limits and is it us practically usable and uh, are there some uh, problems? Inherently, inherent to this, uh, to this thing. So, if this is, if the answer is yes, if our binary classification is not uh, the right thing to do, but this encryption system is compatible with what we, what we want to do for the pre-processing, then looks for we. Uh, I was going to look for better machine learning algorithm, more suitable, like ranking, but also compatible with the encryption system proposed in the state of the art. So I don't have to. I don't have to use another encryption system because this one works, but I'm going to look for a machine learning algorithm that works. If this is the right, um, if the classification is okay, but the encryption is not is not compatible with the preprocessing path, then I need this. I need to look for a better encryption system that is also compatible with binary uh, classification. And also if the two questions are no, then I need to dive deeper into the specifics of our, uh, our program and try to define myself something that is not from the start of the app but works. So, and also the result of this little plus is I work for a startup and I work for, the, for a startup and so things evolve very, very quickly. So right now I have these three functions but maybe tomorrow I'm gonna <coughs> have, have more 10, <coughs> 18 functions that are gonna uh, um, uh, uh, that I am going to take into account in my system, so I need to be ready to to change some stuff, uh, to look <coughs> at new challenges. So this is working for a startup, and this is for the top-down approach. Um, I need to make a selection of main machine algorithm, like some well-known state-of-the-art algorithm, and study the underlying properties that we, that they need on the data distribution. So this is kind of the first step. Is kind of the easy part. This is the second step that is a little bit more complicated. Is um, that I need to select some encryption schemes that I seem that I'm interested in 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 respect to the underlying properties of the data, and find study how they impact this this distribution of the data. And last of all, I need to select one of the machine learning algorithm, the maybe the most suitable, and then uh, elaborate and. A compatible encryption team, which it can be um, made from other encryption teams. But I need to study that in more detail. But this is what I'm doing now. This is um, basically how do how does um, how do encryption systems impact on the data distribution, and how do that um, that affect machine learning algorithm. And I can talk with. My supervisor and also Sarah, and then there may be uh, a paper, um, and sorry, sorry, a conference that may be interested in that. And uh, the deadline is in February, so I'm working toward that, which is not done. But I made this presentation in one weekend, so I might be able to <laughs> do a paper in the time that I have. Uh, and now the conclusion. It's like very high view. And this <coughs> just might explain why I'm doing that on the encryption system. Is that uh, the long-term goal that I fixed for my thesis is to propose a couple of encryption system and machine learning algorithm that first guarantees the safety of one data point uh, that conserves the security properties on, of an encryption system, but also guarantees the utility of the encrypted data for the machine learning algorithm that we choose. And Third, it's practically usable for the data set of, of SES, but then it might be for other, it, it's, it has to be practically usable. I, uh, I don't want to devise a solution that is going to have to, to send a response in something like one hour or two years. And also, this is, this is kind of, this is why it's long term goal, is I, I kind of want this encryption system to allow one kind, specific kind of machine learning algorithm, but doesn't allow other machine learning algorithms. So that when someone gives en the encrypted data to a platform, they, they have the <coughs> theoretical guarantee that 
this data can be used only for, for example, clustering. And there's not going to be any classification done on that. Uh, so to summarize, I want to look for, instead of, you have the clear data and you <coughs> can do um, everything you want from, from it, or you have the encrypted data without, without the capability of decrypting it, and you can do nothing at all with it, I want to make some kind of more flexible data encryption. So here is the trade-off line between utility and privacy. Um, utility of the data it means you, you, this is where the data is the more useful. Privacy is where the data is the, le the more secure. And uh, PBDM is privacy preserving data mining, uh, which uh, uh, there are several surveys on that which, um, I, I mean, this is when you alter the data in order to, pr to provide privacy. But I, I want to work not from pure data to more private data. I want to work for totally encrypted data and move back to more utility. And this is like another approach to this kind of utility and privacy trade-off program <coughs> that is really rising in the community right now. So I think I have something like 10 minutes for questions. If I'm not just an observation, I think that, I'm sorry that the Professor Stavid Chenat is not here at the moment, he's probably flying at this mm -hmm. moment, uh, but, to me, uh, is. but uh, I, I suggest that you have a chat with yeah. him, so they can see. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm very disappointed that he's not here right now, because uh, <laughs> we, we, we talked with John Lion, Lionel, and I know that Stavio is working on something like that, and <laughs> I'm dying to ask him some <laughs> questions. But you don't die, wait. <laughs> okay, but I also need to talk a little bit with uh, with Ivan because he's um, he is working on fraud detection from credit cards from credit cards, and this is a somewhat similar problem than our invoice fraud detection, and also with Mathieu because I think he works for on something that is quite relatively similar, and his techniques on detecting outliers might be interesting in our program. Mm -hmm. Although for, for you it's, it's a little bit different because um, in the credit card domain you basically get fresh ground truth data every month. Basically. Okay. So you have one, uh, one month delay in that you know what was really a fraud and what was not. Okay. And in your case, um, as far as I get it from the scenario, you don't have that particular ground truth data. Mm -hmm. So in your case there's always the question do I miss something? Yeah. Do I miss something important? Mm -hmm. And how can I make sure that my machine learning system, which is in the end then zeros and ones, mm -hmm. really cover all the necessary uh, transactions? Uh, yeah. Because if there is a 10 million deal uh, and you have the insurance on the 10 million deal and you missed it, <laughs> yeah. that, that hurts. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yes. you always have this kind of you want to look into the black box of machine learning mm -hmm. and encryption doesn't make the process mm -hmm. easier. Yeah. Uh, so th that's why for me the, the machine learning properties are not perfectly formalized yet, I think, when you're searching for that. I yeah. think binary is too less because what happens is that you just when you go in with the rules, just learn the rules, mm -hmm. and you have no way of inspecting then what are those transactions that are close to my rules but which I miss. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I think it's more of the ranking problem to inspect that. Mm -hmm. One could also think about rule-based system that allows you to extract human readable rules like mm -hmm. decision trees or fitting linear models to explain some variables, but then you have the problem of the data is encrypted, so yeah. I find it very challenging actually. Yeah, this is why this, um, this is also challenging because <coughs> the things are not fixed for, my, um, for the company. Like for, for now they have these rule systems and and they are looking for something better, but I know that if if we want to have something better, we need to have a grant first, so we need to ask, and then maybe we the, maybe the clients are gonna say yes, or maybe the clients are gonna say no. Um, I think that also having the, we we don't have the cost, actually the, like the, the cost of the transaction, we, we don't have them in the data set, we just, we just know who and when and uh, and what, what idea. And so having the cost of the transaction might be really interesting because then we can uh, we can yes. we can find it. But in order to have this cost of the transaction, we need <coughs> to make sure that no data is going to spill out outside because then 
if we have the cost of iteration, it's even more interesting for an attack for an attacker that to to go and steal the data. So this is a kind of a although I think you can come along with just having the distributions of the data. So having a distribution of the cost mm -hmm. uh, might be sufficient to identify those transactions that are mm -hmm. without. So then the question is, how can we derive the distribution of the of the cost from encrypted data? Stealthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. The thing is, there are a lot of questions to answer, and this is good because uh, I still have two years in order to answer those questions. So I think this is my. Well, one last question. Um, do you, or, or your boss, expect uh, the same performance uh, learning from encrypted data than uh, from uh, non encrypted data? So this is a really good question, and also we don't expect the same performances. We expect, um, like, obviously, like. A little bit more computational <coughs> time working on encrypted data, but uh, I mean uh, the the scores. I mean uh, lo I mean um, uh, the, the performance in the yeah. classification. Mm -hmm. I mean because I think that uh, uh, having mm -hmm. something that uh, that performs well is uh, the goal. Yes. And uh, so maybe it's uh, maybe the boss, your boss, will be um, will change his mind mm -hmm. uh, if the performance are too low. Yes. Uh, with encrypted data, because uh, mm. the, I mean, the people are, are paying yeah. to have a good answer. Yeah. Maybe. But also, this is a problem that uh, you used to deal that maybe some some loss of performances. If it affects, for example, false positives, then maybe it's not it's not that critical. Uh, I think the critical point is yeah. not to have like true negative, because it means you uh, a transaction slipped off uh, of the system, and this is dangerous. But if you have a false mm. Actually, actually, what they expect in a way, I remember the discussion with the companies. Then they say, well, if you, if uh, our data is, uh, if there is no risk of uh, data leakage, so if it's encrypted, so for them, if it's encrypted, <laughs> yeah. um, then we can provide you more information about the uh, about the transaction. For example, the amount of the of the, of the cost of the transaction. Yeah. Now, you, well, as uh, we can give you in clear text uh, the, the IBAN uh, ID and, ta and date. Well, it's sensitive, but not so sensitive. But if uh, if the data, if you can, uh, if data can be encrypted or if data can be uh, can be anonymized or whatever, anonymization is not always simple <laughs> because there are not so many actors. But well, if there if there is a way to protect our data, then we can provide you more information using. This uh, enriched uh, set of information, uh, we would expect better, <laughs> uh, better quality, uh, better prediction. Well, this is what they expect. Uh, it's not clear if they. If, well, the question if uh, enriched, 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 anonymized or encrypted uh, transaction are, are such transactions more? Uh, well, can they help? Can they provide better and better uh, results? Than a clear, clear text, a very simple uh, transactions. So on one uh, on one way you lose, but on another way you you gain. So and, uh, in the paper uh, you have been reading about uh, encryption and machine learning. Mm -hmm. Was there any information about uh, the increase of the performance? I mean, because uh, um, you sorry, were sitting yeah. uh, at least one paper. Yes. And uh, maybe uh, because uh, yes. okay, it is it is possible to do it. Yeah. To learn, okay, with encrypted data. But uh, if you have no idea on uh, how much it decreases the performance, is yeah. it is uh, not very. Uh, they were talking about it, but I don't remember the exact amount of uh, of flow. I think for some situation, I think they. Um, but what's the most important is to quantify the loss, and this is um, this is exactly exactly why I wanted to do this uh, the research of the the best uh, machine learning algorithm. We in taking into account this encryption because this is uh, this is one of the aspects that is going to. to Are you sure it will depend on of, of the algorithm? I mean, if it does not, um, I'm not sure it will change a lot from one algorithm, machine learning algorithm, to another. Uh, and, and, okay. and, and this is this is why uh, it is important to 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 know what kind of uh, properties <coughs> of the data distribution properties <coughs> is impacted by uh, machine learning encryption, uh, uh, sorry, by encryption. Because if you know that, if you, if you have some encryption that conserves 
uh, the, 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 the um, data distribution uh, properties used by one machine learning, it means that the loss is zero. That you have encrypted data, but you don't lose anything using uh, machine learning. But for some of them, I think that there may be some some uh, trade-off to have between the encryption and some ways of encrypting the data that, that may, may or may not impact on these data distribution properties, that so impact on the machine learning results. Okay. To, to, to drill down on that question, you mm -hmm. mostly have nominal data, right? You have yeah. IDs, yeah. and that's it. You even do not, do not have an amount. Right? No. So if it just have a homomorphic uh, encryption, you don't lose any, any information yeah. of the count statistics mm -hmm. as far as mm -hmm. I can. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you, you don't lose anything, so you don't. Ba lose basically, anything. going with a random forest might be actually the best option mm -hmm. of doing that. But why, why do you need the ID? Um, which one? The, uh, the ID of the supplier? Yeah. Uh, because um, there might be cases of, of um, one ID. Uh, sorry. Okay, what we need is more like the um, the couple <coughs> ID and banking information. This is what is of most interest. But sometimes you need the ID alone in order to to know if this is a new company that nobody nobody has ever seen, or if this company has as and you need the ID to to know if this company has been seen. Then what is the, <coughs> the IBAN that they the, the most likely to use? And so this is um, this is used as a key to to derive some other information. Most we don't need the ID per se in the machine learning algorithm, but we're gonna need the ID in the pre-processing uh, step. We're gonna need it to to enrich the transaction. And furthermore, you need the ID to be sure that you pay the right person. And the ID is the is the, I don't the, the reference or the name or the because actually it's a, in France it's a siren siren it's. A it's a company identification number. Say in France, but in other countries, it's, it's, it's different. I'm asking yeah. this because in our university, we have different structures, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, probably we might have different IDs. Yeah. Why we are using the same I, uh, ID? Yeah. So this. So what? This is considered as a fake. Uh, no. no, because a no. company can have, uh, can, uh, can have several IDs. Several ID. Yeah, and actu actually, like. Yeah, I know, I know, but I mean. Yeah, a company you, you can have several it? IDs and. This is yeah. This is more like expert knowledge, uh, really, because uh, um, there are some scenarios that are very very complicated. For example, when the company is not uh, when the the the, ben the actually what how do do I say that? You have um, a company that use another company to 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 uh, handle the transaction. Is it basically you have a, a big structure that uh, is going gonna handle a lot of uh, a lot of different sub companies. But all the payments are going to be made to this big company, and then, so the the ID and the banking account doesn't match because it's not it's not the same. And so this is a special case, mm -hmm. and this is kind of a situation we have to address. And there is that there is the fact that if one IBAN is connected to multiple IDs, then it's most likely to be a fraud because it means I don't. I, so this is like kind of uh, there are, there are a lot of questions then and. This is why I think Beca because for me the definition of fake mm -hmm. transaction or say fake record probably needs to be defined in a, in a better way mm -hmm. because you have mm -hmm. some uh, uh, fraudulent transactions. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean the Ivan is, uh, doesn't exist, mm -hmm. or uh, it exists, but in this when it exists, we could have different situations and different cases that you have to yep. consider. And actually, um, the, um, the rule-based engine that we use nowadays is like is is why I said there are more way of pre-processing and more way of calculating. That there is uh, actually a lot of different use cases and algorithms. Yeah, there is a lot of yes, no. Uh, if this is the, the ca this case and we have this case, this is very complicated. And this is what I'm always talking with my boss in order to mm, to know the, the most the. I have the most possible knowledge about fraudulent transaction, the, but the fact is, um, one of the most complicated thing about uh, fraud detection is that we don't have all the information about all the frauds in the world. So some, sometimes we need to guess, and sometimes we we can only detect a fraud before it happens. So this is like very complicated question. 
and I try to to get the most knowledge I can from my boss because he works in he he has a lot of knowledge about that. But then, so why we want to use machine learning in order to see if the data itself can make us detect faults and stuff. Just <laughs> to hook on on that, I, I think to be more, uh, but think more how, what what other pre-processing options there would mm -hmm. be. Uh, currently, you do not consider any relationships between other uh, companies and events. Yeah, there might be a network of those who yeah. really do together, okay. or the history over time to aggregate those mm -hmm. uh, history. How how many transactions there have been with a certain, and that might might all fall into your category, yeah. but you didn't specify mm -hmm. them. So. Maybe talking to Ivan is, uh, is important in that regard to take mm. in that knowledge from the credit card. Mm. Uh, you know. Yeah, exactly. There, there are so many information that we can derive from uh, the identification of the company, from the banking number of the company, and from both of them together. And I presented three functions, but as mm. but this yeah. process pre processing part is it is what is going to make our machine learning mm. work because the more information we have, the, the more suitable mm. the machine yeah, learning yeah. process is yeah. going to be. But yeah. yeah, well, actually, we, we had a discussion in which we, ad we identified the also this question as something similar to ano anomaly detection. So mm -hmm. we can try to uh, the goal is to characterize uh, normal <laughs> normal situations, so normal uh, normal context. So mm -hmm. a company uh, with a sub company paying this, <coughs> etc. So uh, we well, if we have sufficient number of uh, of instances, and then you can make a uh, you can expect to make a good characterization of uh, of almost all the the normal uh, normal situation. And uh, if there's some something which is not normal, <laughs> which is abnormal, <laughs> which is uh, which is an anomaly, then to raise uh, to raise an alarm. So it's something which is uh, done, for example, uh, by <coughs> now by some um, in uh, intrusion intrusion detection system. Or in some kind of a of new new um, new firewalling system, they mm. work in this way instead of rules, which are very difficult to to identify. They prefer to monitor and monitor and monitor uh, the, the the normal activity in order to try to catch all the all the normal situations and all the not all not and this is not static. It's it's more dynamic, so yeah. the, si the system is in this situation, and then it goes in this situation, etc. Oh. And so uh, this can be interesting, also. So I agree with you. Or try to making, try to implement, trying to implement more pre-processing to make a characterization, a profiling, of, uh, some kind of a profiling or characterization of the dynamic of the of the situation, and the dynamic of the situation can be interesting to uh, to to do. So sometimes yeah. in this type of system, well, usually the people they monitor, so they use, uh, they, they make mm. f during the monitoring phase and the learning phase, they put uh, hundreds of sensors, uh, which is uh, hundreds of, uh, of dimension, and then they make some kind of uh, reduction, dimension reduction, mm. and uh, usually they use some clustering stuff or something like that. So. Perhaps it can be interesting to adapt this type of uh, this type of uh, anomaly anomaly detection used in security systems to this kind of uh, approach. Well, but, but there is always the danger that uh, you, yeah. you miss the, the yeah yeah uh, the anomaly. So, uh, the and human so in the loop, I think. It's and also the danger yeah. that if we have an anomaly yeah. detection, if uh, someone is feeding mm. the system fake information, mm. then they're yeah. going to be considered true. So mm. that. This is um, so. Uh, I think we have really there's a lot to talk about on, on this topic. I'm pretty happy about this presentation because no one fell asleep, <laughs> and uh, also <laughs> the uh, first one. <laughs> we had a lot, a lot of coffee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 it's too big. Also, uh, <laughs> no, because you, you had a good presentation. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Also, nobody. Yeah, uh, yeah. This seems to be um, a topic that raised <coughs> questions, and uh, and uh, so. I think this means it's interesting and that we, we can move forward to that and it's not like, oh my, this is already done or this has no change to happen. So this is this is actually what I wanted this presentation to be and this is why I wanted to record that, okay, that's something we can dive in. Just a, a little one. Uh, <laughs> uh, of course, it is only electronic uh, transactions. Uh, I mean, uh, 
I have some time. Do you have some time? I have uh, a paper invoice. Yeah, this is actually all kind of uh, of, of transition, and most most of the time it's uh, uh, this uh, client super uh, client supplier transition are not uh, electronic. It's okay, so 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 they are actually papers. Yeah. Yeah. So what's about working with the paper? I mean, Sorry? I mean, w what's about uh, working directly with uh, the, the image? May maybe there are some information in a fraudulent uh, invoice. I um, mean, uh, maybe it has been uh, changed with uh, I don't know. Uh, an image, an image uh, uh, system to, to take the, the logo, to yeah. take the, 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 the signature and the, 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 the tampon and so on. Yes. Maybe the neural network can easily, and the yeah. well-known neural network can detect that the document has been modified mm -hmm. and is not uh, just yeah, it's a good yeah. This is it's For a second very process, for example, and you raise the first alarm, Yes, Please take a picture, I mean, I that and then uh, uh, send this picture, and then you have an answer. Okay, uh, maybe for now it already exists. Yeah. I think yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. 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 That uh, the, the paper is not uh, just uh, something uh, with a signature and a uh, mm. tampon, but uh, it has been modified with uh, mm. GIMP or uh, Photoshop. Mm. Or mm. Mm. Yeah, this good is idea. very interesting, yeah. and uh, I think this will interest a lot my, my company. But right now, um, all this processing of transaction is made on the client side. Right. Basically, what we get at uh, uh, as history of transaction is a dump or of okay. their so the ERP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, no anymore the paper. No, no, no. Yeah. We, we don't have the paper. We, but it's a nice idea. To but we can, we can process. ask. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, we can ask. Yeah. So, and this, this okay. might be a very interesting uh, way of de uh, detecting for this transaction. Okay. So, <laughs> thank you. I, 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 think, I think I um, like the time <laughs> I, I did a little more time <laughs> but, then, uh, <laughs> but I think that then no, no one is after me and this is going to be no, the no, no, oh, oh sorry sorry yeah. my bad we have no. two guys after you <laughs> <laughs> it's not on the program sorry